Good morning and uh, welcome to the first in a set of uh, tutorials on the APIC Enterprise Module REST API. Uh, my name is Adam Radford, I'm a Distinguished Engineer at Cisco. The APIC Enterprise Module, for those of you who are not familiar, is Cisco's Enterprise uh, SDN controller. Um, essentially it's comprised of a number of components um, that use a network information database to store information about the, the network itself, treat the network as a system, a um, variety of different southbound protocols that can be used to communicate with the network. These will grow over time. Uh, there are a variety of different services on the, the controller itself for managing the discovery of the, inven of the network, exposing that um, inventory uh, through a service, exposing topology, uh, identity management, policy, etc. And then a variety of ways of interacting with the network through a policy-based mechanism of uh, making change to the network. Probably the best way to uh, understand the controller is to take a quick look at the, the user interface. So this is the user interface on the controller. Um, as you can see, the basic module the model is pretty similar. Simple, the controller talks to network devices, uses uh, radius and identity services information to understand users, and then allows you to make policy-based change. Uh, in EFT2, which is the version that I'm, I'm looking at right now, this is just a sample of the devices that are supported. In many cases, you won't need to upgrade uh, the software on those devices um, because we're using CLI as a southbound protocol deliberately, but that's all abstracted from you, so you'll never know that uh, it's actually CLI that's being used. In some cases, we're using some other protocols as well. Uh, once I discover the network topology, that's available through the inventory service. Um, that gives me a list of, uh, of all of the devices, um, all of the attributes about the devices, um, I also understand all of the hosts that are connected to the network and the point that they connect to the network. Um, if there was a user logged into that device, I would also have access to that information as well. And that can be used um, for policy-based um, networking change. Um, topology is how the, uh, all of the devices get rendered, understands the links and interconnections between devices so I can build the topology, can make changes to that, see where hosts are connected, etc. So, uh, look at layer 2, layer 3 topology, a whole bunch of things I can do there. One of the coolest things is that <coughs> the controller has a self-documenting API called uh, Built on Swagger. So if I wanted to understand how the network device um, table or APIs worked, I could go into the inventory um, service or collection, a um, variety of different things that I can look at here, including interface links, network devices. I click on network devices, it shows me all of the, the REST API calls I can make. Um, if I want to get a bit more detail about a particular REST API call, then I can, um, to, can click on a particular call. Um, in this particular case, um, let's say I am interested in the number of devices that are in the inventory. Network device slash count is the way that I would do that. Uh, it shows me the, the parameters that I need to, to take into account for the result. Um, the status codes, but most importantly, it lets me try it out. So what I can do here is I can click on try it out. Um, that will show me the URL that is going to be used, but most importantly, it'll show me the response from uh, the controller, the live data that's in the controller. So you can see that I have 11 um, devices loaded into the controller. If I wanted to um, get access to those network devices, uh, the way I can do that is through the slash network device slash offset slash limit. So I can scroll down, um, I can put in you know, the first device and give me the first five, uh, try it out, and that will return um, all of the parameters, uh, sorry, all of the attributes about the first five network devices that the controller has. I'm going to go into this in a little bit more detail uh, in a minute, but I just wanted to show how, how cool the Swagger stuff was and how easily it let you uh, interact with the controller. Um, if you look at the, the basic RESTful services that I'm going to cover in this topology, uh, this, uh, sorry, this uh, tutorial, uh, I'm going to look at network device, I'm going to look at interface, I'm going to look at links and hosts, so really those three. Um, tutor uh, location will be covered later. Um, we're going to look at some of the identity stuff later, but I just want to cover these, these uh, first four to begin with. Um, just for those of you who are not familiar with, uh, with RESTful APIs, um, Essentially, there are three components. There's a verb, which is you know what you're going to do. Um, there's a URI or a noun in terms of what you're going to access, 
and then there's some syntax in terms of parameters that you would provide if you're going to make changes or if you expect to receive data. So this is not a REST um, tutorial, but for those of you who uh, want to know more, um, there are lots of other places you can find out that information. But in general, there are four verbs that we support, uh, get, post, put, delete. So get, get me some information, post, make a change to the, uh, sorry, create a new record on the, uh, the controller, put, which is modify a record, and delete, which is uh, remove a record. Um, the example ver a nouns, um, host, link, network device, and interface. Network device is all of the network devices. Interface is every interface on every device. Host is every host uh, on the network, and link is obviously the connections between network devices and hosts. Um, this is just a simple example of JSON syntax, JSON uh, JavaScript object notation. Essentially, it's key, um, colon, value. So policy owner is admin. Um, you can have uh, you can have structures where you group them in brackets. So network user is comprised of a user identifier and an application. Um, you can also have lists as well inside square brackets. Um, in general, um, the general structure is get uh, noun slash count, noun slash identify, which I'll talk about in a minute, um, noun slash uh, noun question mark offset one limit 500 for scalability. This is pagination, so there's a couple of different ways of doing that. Uh, get requests are synchronous, but all of the other requests are actually async. So I'm going to talk about that in, in future tutorials, but essentially what you'll get is a, a response 202, uh, OK, uh, which means in progress you'll get a task ID back, and then you'll have to then you monitor that task to see um, whether the post put delete has been successful, but I'll cover that in a future tutorial. So back to <coughs> the controller and back to the tables that I was talking about. Um, this is quite neat because if I wanted to experiment some more with this, I could take this and put it into something like Postman, which is a RESTful client uh, that you can build into Chrome. Uh, and I can execute exactly that same um, command inside Postman. Um, and you can see exactly what's happening here. I've got the URI, I've got the, the uh, verb, which is get. Um, I've got the ability to assign headers, and it does a good job of, uh, of presenting the information in a very easy and simple way. Uh, one of the key concepts is this notion of identifier, so every record has a unique identifier. The reason that's important is that if I wanted to just look at a specific device, then I could do that, um, just say network device slash device ID. The other reason that that's important is that this device ID, while it's 32 characters that don't make much sense to humans, um, is guaranteed to be unique and makes a lot of sense to computers. So you'll find that in other tables um, where a network device is referenced, it will be referenced by this ID, which is guaranteed to be unique. Uh, an example of that would be, um, say, interface, which is a list of all of the interfaces on the controller. And let's grab the first uh, 100 of those. Oops. Let's just grab the first, let's just grab those. Um, what you'll see here is that um, every interface has a unique identifier, that's fine, um, but the device ID is the device that that's attached to. So in this case, it's gigabit ethernet uh, 1 slash 0 slash 14, um, and it's attached to the device um, that ends in E8C. So if I wanted to find out what network device that was, that would be pretty easy. I could go network dash device slash that particular string and that would show me that that happens to be um, the hostname branch 3850TB1. So that's an example of how these identifiers are used to, to link uh, and cross-connect uh, information or correlate information. If I look at the, uh, the host table, uh, this is a list of all of the hosts on the network. There are two types of... Um, so there are this will give me all of the information about the, the host. Um, it will give me the MAC address, the IP address, um, the user, if it was, um, if I had identity networking 802.1x enabled here, it would give me that as well. Um, and you can see again, it's got the connected network device ID, which is um, a way of finding out both the network device as well as the interface that this is connected to. So if I wanted to get some more details, about the network device, that would be very easy to do. I could say network uh, device slash 
um, that identifier and that tells me that it's in fact that particular um, 3850 switch. So those are some simple examples of how you can cross correlate uh, between the tables. Uh, the other thing I was going to mention is link um, which shows me all of the links on the network and essentially what this does is it gives me information about all of the links and those links are used to connect two things. They either connect two network devices or they connect a network device to a particular host. Um, essentially what you get with a link is you get an identifier, make, makes it unique. Um, you get the ID of the start device. Uh, so in this particular case this device is ends in C12D so I could look that up in network device table. Um, I get the start port ID which is um, the interface on that device um, and I also get the end port ID end device ID and end port ID which is the host, sorry, the device and the interface on that device. Um, in this particular case there's a little bit of extra information because it does give me the end device host name and IP address so that is in fact duplicated because I could get that from uh, the end device ID um, tag so if I was to look up um, device slash end device ID, uh, sorry network device slash that ID, um, you can see that that is that 3850. If I go back to the, the links, um, you'll see that that information is in fact consistent. So that's a very simple example of um, the controller in action. Um, as I said, uh, everything on the controller is, uh, is asynchronous in terms of uh, post, put, delete. Um, the gets are uh, consistent across those different structures. Um, the purpose of this tutorial was just to take you through those uh, tables and just show you how you could use those. Uh, in coming tutorials we'll go into a bit more detail in some of the other services that the, the controller has. So uh, thank you very much for your attention. I hope that that was uh, useful and uh, stay tuned to the next tutorial.